black hairy spiders that are hidden from view in the cracks and the slimy worms and snakes that are burrowed, burrowed beneath the ground simultaneously started flying anywhere. They wanted that it was, is that it was, that is was, wait what? Okay that grammar. The bottom of the sea without water would be like, for the strange creatures underwater, I swear, somebody non, somebody non-American had to create this game. There is no up or down, even the manliest men, even though they appear to become quickly tense up, they become filled with a secret fear that the bug might land on their eyeball or fly into their- ill into their mouth. And that's why men try so hard to kill them. Unfortunately, in deep water, you can't see any of the undiscovered freakish flying creatures that brush past your body as you grasp at your suffocating throat. Number five, fear of being caught. Imagine that you're running from a bear. You'd be eaten if you are caught and it doesn't help that bears can run faster sideways than the fastest human can run forward. When you are at the bottom of the sea, everything that is around you was built to move in water. How much is there to read? If something truly frightening like a shark or a giant squid caught sight of you, you could turn the other way and flail about all you want but the but the monster will catch up with you in a split second. You can't get away from anything. Even if you had the the where what oh, wait what? Okay, wherewithal to see and breathe, you could you couldn't run from danger, it would simply find you and devour you. There are lots of places that I wouldn't want to be, such as trapped in the burning house or alone in the vacuum of space but in the burning house at least I can see in space at least there aren't creatures that could get me there are no other places in the universe that combine as many common fears as seven miles below the surface of the Pacific Ocean it is because of the combination of all of the fears that I am so horrified by deep water holy crap that was a lot to read should I end it here? I've been recording for more than an hour. Okay, I'm not gonna check the- Wait, can I even go down? First of all, I wanna see where this guy went. Okay, where am I going? That was a lot to read. Oh, um... Is that, that, that's my father. I'm falling down. Still falling down. This is gonna be a very, very long recording. Whoa! Okay. I'm guessing I just have to wait. Back at it again. What if it was asleep? It hadn't so much as breathed since I had woken up. Perhaps it was resting believing that it had finally got me. That I was finally in its grasp. Or perhaps it was toying with me after all. It had been doing just that for countless nights. And now with me under it, pinned against my mattress. <laughs> no, I'm joking. With no mother to protect me, maybe it was holding off. Savoring its victory until the last possible moment, like a wild animal savoring, savoring, savoring its prey. I tried to breathe as shallowly as possible and mustering every ounce of courage I could. Okay. I reach over slowly with my right hand and begin to peel the blanket off of me. What I found under those covers almost stopped my heart. I did not see it, but as my hands moved the blanket, it brushed against something. Something smooth and cold, something which felt unmistakably like a gaunt hand. Ugh! I held my breath in terror as I was sure it, w it must now have known that I was awake. Nothing. I did not stir. I, I felt dead. It felt dead, I felt dead. After a few moments, I placed my hand carefully further down the blanket and felt a thin, a thin, poorly formed forearm. My confidence and almost twisted sense of curiosity grew as I moved down further to a disproportionately larger bicep muscle, bicep muscle. The arm was outstretched lying across my chest, <laughs> I'm joking, with the hand resting on my left shoulder as if it had grabbed me in my sleep. I realized that I would have to move this cadav cadaverous appendage, appendage if I even so much as hoped to escape its grasp. For some reason, the feeling of torn ragged clothing on the shoulder of this nighttime invader stopped me in my tracks. Fear once again swelled in my stomach and in my chest as I recoiled my hand in disgust at the touch of strangled oily hair. I could not bring myself to touch its face, although I wondered to this very day what it would have felt like. Dear God, it moved. Oh my god, I've been recording for so long, man. How many chapters are there? It's like a shit ton. I've been recording for one hour. I might make multiple parts, to be honest, because, you know, retention time and all that shit like that, and I want to make multiple videos so you guys can watch. So, um, that is it, um, for, um, I don't know what episode because I'm going to make them separate, but whatever. So, um, yeah, that's been it. Peace!